to the Rocksmith tutorial. So I just got this video game and it's a lot of fun and I think it really does teach you how to play guitar. And so I'm going to give you a bunch of tips that the video game doesn't show you. Here we go. First of all, let's talk about how to hold your pick. Now the video game shows you that you take your pick and you put it on your finger like this and then you put your thumb on like this. I guess technically that's correct, although what they're showing you on the video game is that about half the pick is sticking out past your thumb and your finger and there aren't any pros that play with that much of the pick showing. Really you want just barely any of the pick sticking out from your thumb and your finger. Just a little tiny bit. Barely any pick is showing. Why do you want to learn that? Well, so that when your pick hits the string you can also touch the other strings with the side of your thumb or with the palm of your hand. So you want to hold it like it's a surgical tool. When you hold a pencil, you hold it right at the tip. When a surgeon holds a scalpel, he holds it right at the tip. You want to hold it way at the end like this. That's no good. Okay, now let's talk about tuning. When they show you tuning, they say make sure you hold your guitar so that you can play with one hand and turn the knob with the other hand. That's pretty important. Make sure your strap is on like this so that the guitar will stay without your hands. So one hand plays, the other hand turns the knob. You don't want to drop your guitar while you're tuning, so make sure it's in a stable position where you're not holding it up with your arms. Okay, the next advice the video game gives you is hold your pick above the string and get ready to play. I suppose that's okay advice, but I would never do that. I would take my pick and put it on the string and get ready to play. That's the way the pros do it. Let's take a close-up look at that. Okay, so the video game is telling you hold your pick right above the string. Okay, get ready to play. And then when the note comes, play. Um, that's a flawed philosophy. This is what you should do. Put your pick on the string, like this. Just go ahead and put your pick right on the string. Give it a little tug. See how tight the string feels. Your pick is on the string, you're ready to go. When the note comes, simply pluck. Okay, how could you ever miss if you use this philosophy? Let's take the first note um, from the video game. The first note is on the yellow string. Guitar players call that the A string, or the fifth string or they also say it's the second fattest string. Okay, if I put my pick right on that string and my pick is touching the string, when the note comes down the screen and I'm ready to play, what do you think? Am I going to hit the wrong string? Do you think I'll miss? No chance I'll ever miss. Hey, I like those odds. I have a 100 percent chance of hitting the right note and not missing. Okay, if you use their philosophy and you hold your pick above the string, here I am, I'm holding my pick above the string. Okay, I'm ready to play. Ready, go. Whoops, hit the wrong one. Ready, go. Whoops, didn't hit any strings. Okay, so holding your pick above the string is a good place to start, but what you really want to get used to is put your, strip, put your pick on the string you're about to play. Then, play. Okay, now for this example, I've had my other fingers kind of curled up out of the way so that they're out of the way of the camera and you can see what I'm doing. However, I would never really play with my fingers all curled up like this. Why is that? Well, I want to relax them. I want my fingers just to be in a normal position without any tension. And so, where is that? Well, that's just right about here. Completely relaxed. Okay, and so when I put my pick on the yellow string to get ready to play. What do my fingers do? Well, they're touching the guitar, maybe even touching the strings a little bit. Is that okay? Sure it is. That way I'm getting the feel of the guitar. I got my pick on the yellow string, my fingers are touching the other strings, I'm ready to go. Notice when I played my note, what happened to my fingers? Well, they're still touching the strings. I didn't move them. Why on earth would I want to take my hand away from the guitar strings when I play a note? Because now I'm out in space. Uh-oh, where are the strings? Oh, I gotta go find them. Where's the yellow string? Oh, I gotta go locate it. I'm lost. 
So if I play the yellow string, why not just leave my fingers there? Keeps my hand in the same position. I can easily find the yellow string and play it again. My hand is not moving. I'm still in the same place. You should try that. Just rest your fingers right there on the strings. Okay, another thing you can't see is the palm of my hand right here is resting against the bridge of the guitar. So I've got that resting on the guitar too. I've got my palm on the bridge, I've got my fingers on the strings, and so when I play, my hand is always touching the guitar. And at no time will I ever take my hand and go out in space, because then I'll lose my spot and have to find where I am again. Okay, so when you play the first riff of the tune, notice my fingers are on, the palm of my hand is on, my hand is planted right there on the guitar. I've never taken my hand away from the guitar at all. This is the way every pro plays the guitar. You should learn it that way too. Okay, another more advanced concept is down and up picking. I can move my pick down and play a note, but I can also move my pick up and play a note. So down, up. So try to work on down, up, down, up. A lot of kids get frustrated and they go, well, I tried it for about three seconds and it was too hard, so I gave up. Okay, yeah, it's kind of tough, you know. But you'll get it if you stick with it for a while. Just work on down and up for 10 minutes and you'll notice yourself improve. If you haven't had the pleasure of watching yourself improve, it's one of the most rewarding experiences in life. So if you try down and up and after three seconds you're like, oh, it's too hard, I'll never try it again. Okay, well, you, you missed a chance to watch yourself improve. It sure is a rewarding experience to go, hmm, this up feels very awkward, I can't really do it. Then you just sit there and you do it for five minutes. And then five minutes later you're like, wow, I can do it now. I'm better, I actually feel more coordinated. What a rewarding experience. You should give yourself that experience right now. Just go down and up and do this for five minutes and I guarantee that after a while, the upward pick stroke will be just as easy as the downward pick stroke. That would be great if you could use downs and ups. Now let's talk about the left hand. For some reason in uh, Guitar Smith, they show you the second position to begin. I normally show people the first position. Okay, let me explain what I'm talking about. You've got four fingers to play the guitar. One, two, three, four. Four fingers. They're numbered one, two, three, four. This is finger one, finger two, finger three, finger four. Okay, now the frets of the guitar are spaced apart the exact distance of the average person's hand. How convenient for us. So. Finger one usually plays fret one. Finger two usually plays fret two. Finger three usually plays fret three. Finger four usually plays fret four. So, if your hand is covering the first four frets of the guitar like this, that's called first position. Also, by the way, you can't see it, but my thumb is behind fret 1, just in the exact spot where finger 1 goes. So make your thumb and your pointer finger like a clamp, and place your thumb and your pointer finger like this, and that's right there, right on fret 1. This is fret 1, thumb is right behind fret 1. You're in position 1, first position. You can easily squeeze fret 1, and you can reach up and cover fret two and three and four. From this hand position, you can play the first four frets. Now, if you want to play the other frets, 
up in this area, you'll have to take your thumb and your fingers and slide them like this. So when you take your thumb and your fingers and your entire hand and you slide to a new position, that's called a shift. This is shifting. Right now I'm shifting. This is called shifting up because the notes go higher. This is called shifting down because the notes go lower. Okay, the more shifting you do, the more awkward your playing is. So I would like to play all my notes without shifting. Every time I shift, you create a break in the music. Shifting is not so good. A lot of players just want to play with one finger all the time. It creates a very awkward and jerky motion and the sound is really broken and disconnected. So you don't want to play the first riff in the tune and go shift, 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 shift. Notice how much my thumb and my first finger keep jumping. Every time you move your hand to a new spot, you have to reorient your body and reset your kinesthetic sense. Your kinesthetic sense is just the feel of the, the nerves and the skin and the fingertips on the strings and the frets. That's how people learn to play with their eyes closed, is they have their kinesthetic sense. Okay, anyway, let's get back into positions. You learned position one. Play position one with me. Learn to use all four fingers. If you're at home doing this, you're playing kindergarten guitar. That's the way a four-year-old plays. Look, I only have one finger. I'm not going to use the others. Okay, if you want to be a pro, use all your fingers. Learn to use all your fingers. If the pinky finger seems stiff to you, that's okay. Learn it slowly. Position it. It's even okay to grab your finger and put it in position. Make sure you got it just right and then play. Like I said before, if you haven't experienced how it feels to watch yourself improve, you're doing yourself a great disservice. It sure is fun. It's one of the most rewarding experiences in life to sit there and go, hmm, my pinky can't play. Gee, the pinky's too hard. And then it, rather than giving up, you're like, okay, I'm going to try the pinky again. Mm, my pinky, it just can't play, but I'm going to keep trying. And then after about 10 minutes of doing the same darn thing over and over, pretty soon your pinky feels warmed up, and it can play smooth, and it feels strong. And you all of a sudden realize, oh my gosh, I just got better. I feel like I can play the guitar better. It's a rewarding experience. You should try it. Do it right now. Just play this over and over for five minutes. And when you're done, I guarantee your pinky finger will really feel like it's in shape. It's getting a lot of exercise. Okay, let's learn the other positions. Now, if I take my hand and I go like this, now my thumb is right there behind fret two, and my pointer finger is right there holding fret two. And then I can reach up and easily play fret 3, and fret 4, and fret 5. Right now I'm covering fret 2, and 3, and 4, and 5. There's nothing over here near fret 1. I can't play fret 1. My hand is not going to be able to reach that. The only notes I can reach right now are 2, 3, 4, 5. This is what musicians call the second position. Likewise, you know, if you slide that up like that, okay, now you got the third position. If you go up again, now you got the fourth position. If you slide up again, that's the fifth position. Okay, anyway, the reason I'm showing you all this stuff is because the first riff you learn is in the second position. So to play the music, you got to put your thumb behind fret two and you put your pointer finger on fret two and that's where you begin that's the first note you play 
Okay, now if your thumb is way over here, yeah, good luck. You'll never reach all the notes. Your hand will have to stretch and you'll be like, oh, they're too far away, I can't do it. Put your thumb right behind fret two. Put your finger on fret two, just like that. Okay, now if your thumb is way out here, poking out in space like Jimi Hendrix, um, that's bad. Because then your fingers feel shorter and you can't reach up. You'll never reach fret five from this hand position. Okay, so do it like a pro. Put your thumb right there, right behind fret two. Put your finger right there on fret two. That's the first note from the first riff. Okay, now what finger do you reach out to play the next note? You're going to play fret number four right now, and you're going to use your ring finger. Guitar players call that finger three. One, two, three. And then what are you going to use next? You're going to use your pinky. And that's on fret five. Okay, so you're basically playing these fingers. Bum, 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 bum. Each note is played by a different finger. Each time you play a different note, you use a different finger. Okay, if you're at home playing one finger, yeah, good luck. That's kindergarten guitar. Every time you shift, your body forgets its kinesthetic sense and you're you're going to have to reset all your senses. You'll never be able to play without looking. Okay, so we're not sliding the thumb at all. You can play all these notes and not travel around and, and you know, not slide. There's no sliding in this riff. All you do is change from one finger to the next finger to the next finger. It takes three fingers to play this riff. Okay, now I also experience a lot of players that say, well, you know, my pinky's not so coordinated, so I'll just use these three like this. Okay, now, I don't know if you can see it, but my hand is really contorted. And my arm is really just kind of strained. Can you see my knuckles turning white? And look how much my wrist is bent. Bending my wrist all the way, my fingers are like claws. I'm trying to stretch so far that my hand is like in knots. Okay, that's bad. Here's the way a pro plays it. Okay, look at my hand while I'm resting. Now look at my hand while I'm playing. Is there really a lot of difference between resting and playing? Did my hand take on a different shape or did it contort or move into like a weird angle and bend all crazy just to play the guitar? Not really. Okay, you should try that. Just rest your fingers above the guitar strings without playing. Just don't even play. Just take your hand and let it relax and rest the fingers and just let your fingers float right above the guitar strings like this. Okay, that's the way you should start right there. Then when you're ready to play, you press the notes down. Notice that you didn't really do this all of a sudden when you began to play. If your hand suddenly goes like this, then you're really trying too hard and making all the muscles in your hand uh, do maximum work. You'll get tired out and you won't be able to play fast that way. So. You definitely do not want to try to stretch up there with finger two. Look at my hand. That's a really tense position. Now I have to stretch up with this one. Ugh, I can barely get it. Okay, so trying to play this Rolling Stones riff with these three fingers is bad news. Because your hand will get really tired fast with all the stretching. Okay, here's what I want to show you next. We're going to do it the right way, and we're going to do these three fingers. And what I want to mention is this. You don't actually hold all three fingers on the string at once. Now, right now, I'm showing you how I'm pressing three fingers down at the same time. But you know what? You don't have to hold all three fingers at the same time. 
See, you simply hold finger one. And then when that note's done, reach out the next finger. Notice, the other finger's gone. I let it go. That's what I call finger exchange. First I got this finger down, and then I'm going to let that finger go and reach out the next one. There, now how many fingers do I have on the guitar strings? Only one. Okay, now after that note's done, then I'm going to play the next finger. Now how many fingers do I have? Just one. Okay, next note. How many fingers have I got now? Just one. Play the next note. There it is. Okay, so I never press down more than one finger at a time. If you're trying to press down all three fingers at once, then you have to really stretch and you're trying to grip. It's too much work. So just press down one finger, one finger, one finger, one finger, one finger, one finger. There you go. That's the secret of relaxed playing is not trying to do too much work. Just only press down the notes you need to play. No extra notes. It doesn't help you or make it sound any better to hold all three notes. In fact, it makes your hand more tense. So one finger at a time. Okay, the next bit of advice that'll make you really good at guitar is noticing what I call fly away fingers. This is fly away fingers. Look at my pinky. It's like six inches away from the guitar. It's six inches away from the notes. Okay, what if I want to play that note? Well, I've got quite a long distance to travel. Okay, so I want to play more like this. Notice that my fingers are just right there floating above the guitar strings. I'm not really touching the strings yet with the tips of my fingers but I'm just floating above the strings. You'll also notice that my hand right here where my big knuckle is is against the edge of the guitar right there underneath fret 2. So I've got my thumb behind on fret 2 I've got my knuckle underneath on fret 2 and then my fingers kinda of curl up in the shape of a letter C and I'm ready to go and I'm floating above the strings. Okay, so if you've never played guitar and this is your first experience and you're like, okay, here's my Rolling Stones riff from the uh, sound check of the video game, probably the first thing that will happen is you'll press your index finger down to play the first note of the song and look at those other fingers. They fly away. They go stick out straight and they go about six inches away from the strings. Why is it that when one finger squeezes, the other fingers, they want to go stick out straight? Maybe it's just hand physiology. Is it possible just to squeeze finger one and have the other fingers just remain curled up, just floating above the strings, instead of sticking out? Try that. Just play one note. Play the first note of that Rolling Stones riff, second fret. What are the other fingers doing? Are they sticking out? Or are they just floating right above the strings, ready to go? Ready for their turn? Okay, watch for that. You have to play real slow. You can't play at full speed and do this. You have to just say, I'm going to play one note right now. Okay, look at your fingers. What are they doing? If they're relaxed, they're what I call jello fingers. They should be as loose as jello. There shouldn't be any tension in these fingers because they're not even playing any music notes. Okay, let's move on to the next note in the song. The next note is when you press down fret 4 and you're using your ring finger. Okay, what are the other fingers doing when you play that note? Are they stiffened up or are they just real relaxed and curled up in the shape of the letter C? If they're sticking out like this, that's bad. Try to just relax your fingers and reach out and play the note. Don't let your other fingers stick out into space. 
Watch out for that flyaway pinky. Is your pinky flying away and going way out into outer space? Watch out for that. Your pinky should look like this. It's not going anywhere. It's just floating. Okay, let's move on to the next note in the tune. When your pinky finger plays fret 5, what do the other fingers do? Are they sticking out into space like that? Watch out for flyaway fingers. Okay, relax your fingers. Float them above the strings and play the pinky note. What do the other fingers do? Hopefully they're jello fingers. Alright, so watch out for those flyaway fingers. Okay, let's go through the rest of I Can't Get No Satisfaction by the Rolling Stones, which is the first song from the Rocksmith video game. Okay, you'll notice that when you look at the screen at the beginning of the song, um, all the frets are kind of blue lines. And then four of the frets are kind of glowing blue. And the four frets that are really bright blue and glowing are second fret, third fret, fourth fret, fifth fret. The reason that those frets are glowing bright blue and all the others are dark blue is because that's where the four fingers are going to go in preparation to play the song. So that's why I explained second position. Now later in the tune, when you get about halfway through the tune, you notice that other frets start to glow. Like halfway through the tune, you'll see five, six, seven, eight, and they'll glow bright blue. And all the other frets are dark. Okay, that's telling you, put your hand here. Take those four fingers and go five, six, seven, eight. Float right above the strings right there. And you're ready to play whatever notes are coming up. So you'll have to shift to fifth position. And also later in the song, about two-thirds of the way through the tune, other frets will glow. You'll see seven, eight, nine, ten glowing bright blue, the four frets in a row. Again, it's showing you where those four fingers go. Seven, eight, nine, ten. This is what I call the one finger per fret method. It's what every pro uses. You take your four fingers, you line them up on four frets. You can play any one of those four frets easily without having to stretch. So that's how you play the Rolling Stones. I can't get no satisfaction. Just watch for those four glowing frets on the screen and it'll show you how to shift your hand from one position to the next. Okay, if all this talk about positions really confuses you or infuriates you, then think of it this way. This will boil it down into layman's terms. You don't want to play all the songs in Rocksmith with one finger. If you're at home going, oh, I'm going to play all the notes, I'm going to play the whole song, and I'm only going to play one finger the whole time. Okay, well, good luck. You'll never make it past the first level if you can only play the guitar with one finger. So as you go through the notes of satisfaction, try to experiment with using different fingers. I challenge you to play each note with a different finger. So if you played this note with your pointer finger, play the next note with your third finger. Play the next note with your middle finger. Play the next note with your index finger. Always switch fingers. Try to get used to using all of the fingers. Try to play a different finger on each note. That'll at least get you started with the coordination of using all the fingers instead of just using one finger.